Well, here we are again, folks, at the Small Business Show. Right, Shannon? We, we are <laughs> here. Yeah. Another day or another week of uh, of trying to get things back in business. And yeah. I'm really happy. You know, we have a, a guest today that is uh, was really hammered by this whole lockdown thing. Their whole concept of their business uh, are just really personal, often require, you know, people to get really close to one another. So it's, it's going to be very interesting to hear how they've either kept things going or change things and what their plan is for, you know, as we, as we all start getting work again, I'm really excited to talk to him today. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Very, very timely. Um, and, and, and interesting because it, he's worked with these businesses for a long time and, and yeah. then had to pivot big time. Very, very yeah, quickly. And, yeah. and he's, and it's still, we're still kind of on that systems, uh, concept cause he's, they've developed a, you know, systems to help these businesses out and, uh, it's going to be great. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. I want to take a minute and talk about our first sponsor here today, which is PDF pen from smile at smilesoftware.com slash podcast. PDF pen 12 is the new version and it's the ultimate tool for editing PDFs on the Mac and other uh, platforms. You can use it on your iPad and iPhone and it even supports your Apple pencil on there, but PDF pen 12 for the Mac adds in features like the ability to op optimize your PDFs for smaller file sizes with customizable image compression settings. This is huge. We're all sending documents around even more than we used to, right? And being able to make sure yours are compressed but still looking good makes it so that you can send them via email without it running up against mail server limits and all of that stuff makes a huge difference. I always talk about with PDF Pen how I like to sign things, but sometimes you get those DocuSign links, right? It's just how it works. Guess what? PDF Pen 12 now built in DocuSign support for digitally signing your PDFs that way. So you can use it even in the world of DocuSign, which is great. Like I said, it supports uh, Mac OS Catalina, the latest version there, and then also iPad and iPhone with iOS 13 and Apple Pencil. You can learn more about PDF Pen and PDF Pen Pro at smilesoftware.com slash podcast. Go check it out. And our thanks to PDF Pen and Smile for sponsoring this episode. All right, Shannon, you got anything else before we, uh, before we listen to Derek here? I'm ready, man. Let's do it. All right. He is Shannon Jean. I'm Dave Hamilton, and this is episode 276 of the Small Business Show. We look at, at Facebook and even YouTube and Instagram, and we see them as marketing channels now, right? And when they first started, they were social connection channels, right? They're about connecting with your friends and family and sharing and building relationships and fostering relationships. And we've kind of gotten away from that where it's just like, buy my stuff, buy my stuff, buy my stuff. Here's an offer. Here's an offer. Here's an offer. So kind of going back to the roots of what social media really was created for was again, connection and building relationships. People are going to, it's going to be a breath of fresh air because we've moved so far away from that where everybody's just, you know, discount here, freebie here. And so, yeah, as I mentioned, it's a breath of fresh air and it allows people to build a relationship before you even offer something. To Hey, Dave, you know, we talk about it a lot and everybody reads about it right now. You know, small businesses have been hit so hard during this uh, COVID, you know, lockdown of the economy, but maybe, you know, none as much as like personal services, like barbers, salons, gyms, totally. uh, you know, just done. Yeah. And, and with, with, I don't know when they're coming back. It's kind of crazy. So today in the show, we have a, a great opportunity. We have a guest that specializes in implementing systems, which everybody knows we love specifically for gyms, personal trainers, CrossFit yoga studios, and things like that. And I just couldn't think of a better time to learn about untapped revenue and their system to help personal services get back in business as we all get back to work. So welcome Derek Vervoren of untapped revenue. Thank you so much for joining us today, Derek. We really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. I'm happy to be here. That's cool. So I have a bunch of questions. 
obviously about helping, you know, what your plan is and how you've had to adjust your business uh, going through everything. But first, l- let's just talk about your business. What, what does Untapped Revenue do? What services do you offer? You know, give us the elevator pitch, if you will. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Untapped Revenue is a full service membership growth agency. And as you mentioned, we specialize with uh, gyms, uh, fitness studios, CrossFit facilities. And we basically do everything that we possibly can to help a, one of our clients bring a click from Facebook and turn them into a client. So we take care of all their ads, we take care of all of their follow-up and we help them with the sales. So we do as much as we possibly can to make it as easy for them to turn a click into a client. Oh, that's cool. That's great. And it all starts on social media. That's really your, your, your niche there. Yeah, exactly. So our bread and butter is, is Facebook ads. Is Facebook uh-huh. ads. Oh, that's great. That's, okay. that's cool. So, you know, is this your first uh, business venture? I, I have read about on LinkedIn. I looked and I saw a lot about Facebook expertise and everything. And I'm just wondering if you've done other things with that or is Untapped Revenue your, your, you know, your rollout venture? So... Untap revenue is the first thing that uh, me and my business partner ever got off the ground. <laughs> so nice. hey, that's great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I think with any entrepreneur, they've definitely had ideas that they thought the world of, but never ended up, in, you know, coming to fruition. Yeah. So I had a few of those ideas and this was all happening while I was at university learning how to get a job. But what I learned uh, was that I did not want a job. <laughs> So lear- welcome, welcome to, to the, the club. club. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> look to look around to find some opportunities to, you know, start a business, work uh, online and at home. Um, so the first thing that we actually looked at was drop shipping. And I'm not sure uh, if you're oh, familiar yeah. with the, that sure. model. Um, but that's just e-commerce, right? You, you put up a website, you sell the products from China, China ships it to the consumer and you basically pocket the difference you charge, you upcharge for whatever product that was. Sure. And that was a cool idea, but never really enticed us enough to really, you know, put, put the metal to the floor, right? Really gas it. So we right. decided to move into social media. And thankfully I had a very close personal relationship with my gym back home. I've been going there for a long time. They'd help me with, uh, I I did Muay Thai for a long time. They, they'd help me, uh, with my training there. So I had a relationship with them and with the newfound skills that I had with social media, I was able to offer my services for free and just, um, help them out, get them grow their business. And basically that after that, it was history. We, we got really great results for them. And then we just basically got a case study and stayed with gyms. It's just, um, it's just where we've, we started and fortunate enough, we got a great result to begin with and we continued that way. That's cool. Yeah, it's great. I mean, it's, we love niches here and it just seems like such a unique niche and, uh, it's great. So it's sticking with that, you know, talking about the business, is that kind of the biggest problem with this gym and personal services type thing? Is that customer turnover? So are you always constantly having to look for new members? Is that, is that the issue or? Yeah, I'd say that's, that's one of their biggest challenges is attrition. Um, typically with, with all the clients that, w- that we've serviced over the, the few past three years is their average retention is about six to eight months. So that's not typically, that's not too, too long. So they're always looking for acquisition mm-hmm. and then how to help retain. Those are the big two challenges that, that we we actively help them um, improve upon so that they can increase the retention, uh, keep members a little bit longer and obviously continue to acquire more so they can, you know, get to max capacity and maybe open up another location. So I, I, I want to dig in a little bit on this because this is interesting to me, the acquisition part. I I mean, I'm no Facebook ads expert. In fact, I, there's a lot I want to learn from you, but, uh, the acquisition part makes sense to me that, that doing that with Facebook ads, reaching out to the right audiences and doing it the right way. And I don't know the right way, but you do, then that makes sense. But in terms of retention, how are you using Facebook ads or are you using Facebook ads to do that? So we're not, you're not typically using Facebook ads to help with retention. Um, that's, that's all basically internal, right? Figuring out what you know, the problems are, why people are leaving Got it. and then obviously solving those problems, right? That's the biggest thing is as opposed to just letting people leave, understand why they're leaving. See if you can get them to fill out a survey and be honest with you. You know, you're not going to hurt our feelings. Why is, why are you typically leaving? And if you can solve those problems, you can typically help with retention and keep people a little bit longer. 
Um, but there definitely are things that you can do in terms of Facebook advertising, just because you want to, by attracting the right type of person, right? Oh. If you, um, if you attract somebody who's a tire kicker and they're only interested in a, a quick fix, then that's not necessarily a great member to acquire because they're not typically going to stay too long. Right. Um, but if you, you know, tweak your marketing and maybe have some valuable content out there that's attracting your perfect avatar, you hear that a lot in the marketing space, then you're going to acquire somebody who's going to actually stay with you for a longer period of time. They understand that fitness and wellness is not a one month pill or something that you can just take and it's done. It's an it's a, a lifelong thing that you need to be focusing on, right? Sure. No, yeah. that makes total sense. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. So you're helping these businesses kind of cr create the profiles who, of who they should be targeting to bring into the gym so that the attrition is less. Is that right? Um, no, not necessarily. Typically, the gym owner knows who their perfect person is. We, we, we have them fill out a survey whenever a new client jumps on board with us. And typically, they know, okay, this is our you know, this is our meat and potatoes of who we have on average more of, like if, if it's female or male or what age demographic, um, are they married? Are they not married? Different stuff like that. So they know who their best members are. And then it's just about a matter of configuring your ads and configuring the marketing strategy to acquire more of those types of people. I got it. Okay. That makes sense. And does untapped revenue, are they paying you uh, a, a percentage of what you bring in? Is it a monthly service? H how do the, the uh, gyms, uh, you know, pay you guys? Yeah. So we're a monthly service. Monthly okay. Subscription. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, that's great. That's cool. That's, that's fascinating. Um, so, so let's talk about the impact of, uh, you know, the crazy virus and, uh, you know, shutting down the economy, certainly gyms and the type of businesses that you guys are helping have really, you know, taken a hit. And have you implemented changes in how you operate and, and the services that you're offering as small business owners? And then secondly, uh, you know, what's, what's the plan for recovery for the types of businesses that you guys are servicing? Yeah. So, um, just to answer the, the first part of the question there, yeah. we've, we've definitely pivoted. We've had to make a huge change to how we're going to serve our service, our clients, because I mean, we can't do what we were traditionally doing. You can't get a person right. to fill out a form to come to a physical location because everybody's confined to their homes right now. Right. Yeah. So what we had to do is help them create an online program that they can offer and have it be a hundred percent online. Um, so we basically created a separate business model for our clients to market and advertise to help them kind of subsequent or substitute that income that they're not necessarily getting from the brick and mortar portion of the business that they've always relied on. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's awesome. And I, I really commend you for looking at that and not panicking and figuring out, okay, how, how do we shift? How long did it take you guys to start implementing, you know, I'm, I'm out in California. We kind of shut down here, out here in mid March, I guess it was, uh, you know, did you kind of know right away? Oh, you know, we're, we're in trouble and, and sit down and, and, and roll this thing out quickly or to take a few weeks. It definitely took a few weeks. Um, I mean, we were kind of and hindsight is always 2020, as they say, right? Oh, yeah. It would have been great if we were on top of it a little bit sooner. Um, but as we started, you know, hearing through the grapevine of what was happening throughout the world, as well as clients seeing, or clients uh, sharing concerns, that's when we really started to look into this online solution because um, we figured just, I mean, we're kind of... Um, we're in the same situation that we can't service our clients if our clients can't service their clients. Totally. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right? So sure. we needed to find a solution and um, it's actually been working really well um, because people need fitness, even though they're staying at home. Um, a, t a person who is in great shape and, you know, always going to the gym, say they're going to the gym five days a week, they're not going to be okay with the status quo of waiting four months or whatever, however long this lockdown is, they need an alternative solution. So creating something online to service those people. And also there's always people that are looking, you know, like today's the day that I get in better shape, right? That happens every day, tons of millions of people. So giving them something that they can actually implement, use, get results with while staying home was, was like really important for us to help our clients 
implement and get started. Now, that's really smart. The, my wife's gym absolutely jumped right on that bandwagon and started streaming and, and, and it, with, with some stumbles and they had to iterate and figure out how to get the audio right and, you know, all of that stuff. But absolutely. Yeah. People are into it for sure. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I think um, I think a lot of people are very forgiving during this time, right? Totally. They understand that right. this is, this is totally new for a fitness location. They've always been brick and mortar. They're doing this new online thing. I think there's a lot more forgiveness with, like you said, there's these iterations, there's these bugs that necessarily need to be fixed. So there's a little bit of grace period where you're allowed to, you know, we're migrating, please be <laughs> kind. We're, we're doing our best here. And I think people get that. So it's, um, a very forgiving time to move to the different model. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. We, we've had a lot of businesses online lately or here on, on the show lately talking about shifting things online, everything, you know, you, you can imagine. And one of them was a therapist and talking about how actually it, it showed lots of promise and there was some real po uh, positive things about doing it uh, online. I would imagine as you're talking to these, you know, panic gym owners, you, you kind of got to act like a therapist yourself, right? <laughs> uh, uh, you know, calming them down. Okay, here we have a plan. I mean, are you uh, may, finding yourself mainly focused on your existing customer base of of gyms to to say, look, it's going to be fine. We have this program coming to place, or are you still, you know? then bringing in, uh, you know, new customers. How, how's that working for you? Yeah. So right now we're, we're primarily focusing on our existing clients. We, we want to make sure that they're taken care of. And as you said, we're, we're doing the best that we can to keep them calm and keep them happy and make sure things are still working for them. Yeah. Um, that's the, the most important for us, importance for us right now. Um, cause yeah. And, and it's also, it's funny that you say, you mentioned a therapist, it's a therapeutic for me to share that everything's going to be okay. Because even though I'm telling somebody else that I'm thinking that myself. Oh, totally. I say it, right? <laughs> totally. Yeah. Cause you're hearing the words. I mean, you're, we talk about it on the show all the time. You know, you're kind of creating this reality as you talk about it. Exactly. Uh, and it, it, it's cathartic, right? It's great. And that, that's a good thing to point out. Like uh, uh, on your website at, you know, untapped hyphen revenue.com. You guys have some great videos with uh, your your clients. I, I assume you know gym owners and that kind of thing uh, are are the ones. And I, I listened to a few of those. Really great interaction and just kind of the real deal of somebody, you know, not really scripted, you know, not uh, you know slick and polished, but just real. And and I think it's really effective. Um, and and I've, have you guys done that from the start? Oh, thank you. I, I really appreciate you saying that. But yeah, that's that's typically how we've gone. I mean, we definitely have a, a structure that we have in mind, right? Certain questions that we want to ask so that they can be very valuable and informative videos for other potential prospects looking at them. But we very much want it to be an open conversation. We don't want them to feel that they like we want them to be completely open and honest and not say, you know, we're going to get on a call. I want you to say this and only this. Yeah. Uh, we don't really necessarily feel that that's the right way to go about it. Um, so I'm glad that that impression came through on your end. Yeah. I, it really struck me because, I mean, we deal with so many different businesses and, you know, a lot of them are, you know, Great. They're all awesome. But some of them are really over. I think some of the videos and things that they do are kind of overproduced. And I liked that it was just a couple of people talking about it. You know, the guy in his t-shirt and this and that. But that it it connected with me because I'm like, oh, that's like me. You know, if I was a guy, I'd be like, I need help, you know. So it's cool. <laughs> it was very cool. So it is so how do you get you know, your voice heard above all the other marketers out there? You know, there's just uh, it, it seems like uh, a crowded field, you know, what's worked the best for you? Are, are you using your same Facebook techniques to, to bring gym owners to you guys or, or what do you, what do you do? Yeah. So that's, that's a great question. And there's, there's a few things that come to mind that have really um, helped us out the most. And in terms of Facebook ads, it's, magnitudes different running a national campaign like we, we do for our business compared to a local business ad. Um, but we've definitely had a lot of success in terms of doing our own Facebook ads. That's, that's something that helped has helped us get our voice heard, as you say. Yeah. And also, uh, as I mentioned in the very beginning, when, when we first started and we were working for free with, um, my personal friend that owned a gym, getting that first case study, um, and having it be a really good result was a really good way for us to showcase that, you know, we know what we're doing. This isn't just, uh, we're not 
if we didn't go on YouTube last night and watch a YouTube, uh, YouTube video about how to do Facebook ads. And now we're yeah. claiming to be experts. We actually have a result and that really allowed us to kind of penetrate, um, I think all the noise. Um, and then lastly, I think it's been word of mouth. We've, we've been very fortunate that our client, our clients have been happy with the results we've been getting them, uh, so much as to share with their friends and, um, colleagues. And that's been a, a great, um, stream of new prospects coming to us. Oh, that's great. Very cool. All right. So I, I, I mentioned this before I'm, I'm an idiot with Facebook ads. So as dummy Dave, because I think we might have some <laughs> listeners that know a little bit more than me, but not nearly as much as you, uh, like if someone's looking to get started, what are the mistakes that people make that you can just guide people against real quick? as we're, as we're just kind of giving people a, a lay of the land. Cause I, I think there's, I think there's a lot of value here. Yeah. So the, the biggest mistake, um, what's interesting, I think the biggest mistake when it comes to small businesses running Facebook ads is not having underlying systems behind their Facebook ads. Mm. I honestly believe oh, like, cause if, honestly setting up Facebook ads is, is pretty simple. Well, that's the problem. It's honest. they're simple, but, but if you don't, like, they aren't necessarily effective just because they're easy. That's a very good point. That's a very good point. Um, but sorry, what I, what I mean by the, the, the underlying systems is if you're setting up a Facebook ad to get somebody to opt in, having a, some like, in either automation or somebody on your team ready to call this person or text this person is very important because in on in the online space if somebody opts into your offer on facebook and you don't reach out to them within 10 to 30 minutes they've already forgotten huh oh wow so huh. it needs to be very very quick otherwise you're you're just burning your ad money which is is very unfortunate so if you are only running facebook ads and you don't have any sort of automation behind it you're really shooting yourself in the foot and that is honestly and it's um a little bit of a sidestep to your initial question just on on facebook ends but that's the biggest thing that we see is not having anything after the lead has been acquired is really the I think the biggest thing that's hurting people that no, that makes yeah. perfect sense. I, you you yeah. got it. Yeah. You got to follow up. Right. Um, oh, all right. Yeah. So I, I will ask one more question. Facebook always encourages me to target wider and wider as I'm going through their thing. And to me, that seems counterintuitive. It seems like, no, I just want to target very specific groups and, and, and see how they do and then expand from there. Am, is Facebook right? Or am I? So that, and that's going to depend on the type of business that you're, you're running. So okay. in, in terms of your ads, are you guys targeting all of the United States, all of North America? Well, I mean, it, likely yes, but more than that, I, you know, let's say we, we have you on the show, right? And so I might want to target, uh, people that are interested in, in buying Facebook ads, right? I mean, I, I know that's a little meta, right? But, mm -hmm. you know, go with me on this, right? Yeah, someone that's looking to learn about what, what an area where you have expertise, we've just had you on the show. So I really try to target that. And as soon as I do it, Facebook says, well, you should, you know, you should expand your targeting. You should expand it. They, they lead me down the funnel until it feels like, well, now I'm just targeting the world. So I it, it, like how granular is too granular or is, is there no too granular? Yeah. So that's, that's a, that's a really great question. And quite honestly, because like Facebook has, has very, very, very smart technology and artificial intelligence, right? right. So we're actually noticing that if you're doing more national campaigns, letting face like letting like um releasing some of the reins or the reel like if you're fishing you don't necessarily yeah. want to pull too tight letting go a little bit is actually better because facebook knows more than anybody in the entire world could possibly know got it okay right? so, so, so let you, them guide me let them exactly. let them take some take some liberties okay yeah yeah. So like it, when you have your Facebook pixel installed and you're optimizing for something, um, and I might be getting into a more te technical talk here, no, this but, is great. This is stuff that small business owners are dealing with for yeah. sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but again, this is, this is a little bit different, but if, when it comes to local businesses, like if you only service within a five mile radius, then stay there. 
Of course. Uh, got it. But when it comes to more national campaigns, you want to let Facebook get a little bit more wiggle room because when you have that pixel installed, Facebook's going to find, regardless if you're, even if you have no targeting, like broad, meaning just the United States and like a, an age range, Facebook's going to find people that are more related to the people that have already opted in. And if you narrow down too, too small, that doesn't give uh, Facebook enough of a pawn to really fish in. Okay. So you just answered my question and that is okay. make sure you use that Facebook pixel on your landing page. E even if you're not using it for any follow-up reasons by allowing them. And of course there's some, you know, you, you got to buy into this and, and there's the privacy issues of allowing Facebook to know things about your website's readers. But, mm -hmm. uh, but by doing that now you've just made your ads more effective because now Facebook can profile and find people similar. That makes perfect absolutely. sense. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Facebook knows so much about its users. We want to allow them to uh, do what they do best. And uh, oftentimes marketers, because we, we, <laughs> we understand the technology, we kind of stunt their growth and right. by targeting too much. And yeah, we're finding, and a lot of the, the best people in this space are finding the same things is if you allow Facebook to just do their job, you know, don't target too, too much. Don't do interest, over, interest targeting over interest targeting and just right. keep, uh, layering it. Um, Facebook's going to find your right prospect at the right time for them. Makes perfect That's sense. Cool. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Thank That's you great. for walking through that. That's super valuable. And if you need more than that, then go talk to Derek and he'll take care of it. <laughs> yeah. It, that's great. And I, I, what I like is, I mean, you talked about uh, mistakes and the uh, Facebook mistakes and everything, but we, we're big fans of mistakes on the show. We talk about it all the time. We talk about it with every guest. Uh, I really like your transparency when we, at the beginning of the, the interview where you're saying, well, we, this was the first thing that really got off the ground for us. Cause that, that, that authenticity is, is great. And it helps aspiring business owners to know, Oh, okay. I, I, I may not make it with the first few things I, I try, but then this next thing. So keeping on that, that topic of, of mistakes, um, is there is there a mistake that you made either with untapped revenue or maybe one of the other things trying to get started that that stuck with you and taught you a valuable lesson that you can share with us on the show? Biggest mistake. Um, I, I'd, I'd have to say, and, and just before I get into it, I love the, the, the how you say best mistake, because I'm a I'm a big believer of you. You learn or you win. Right. There's yeah. no failing. Yes. Um, uh, yes. <laughs> I love that. And so by best mistake, we, we definitely have a, a best mistake that comes to mind. So, um, I think it was, it was either, I think it was 2019, 2019. We were, we were, things were going really well. Our Facebook ads were doing, um, great. We were getting a lot of uh, different clients and we had heard that the natural evolution of an agency was to move from done for you, which is what we were doing and move it over to done with you slash do it yourself, which means you create an online program or a coaching platform where you can show people how to do it on their own. Ah, okay. So we were like, great, this is what we'll do. We'll shut off all our ads that were, that were going well right now for the done for you. We'll create this online program because we have it all systemized. We know how to do it on our end. We'll show people how to do it on their end. And so after months and months and months and months of <laughs> advertising and speaking to gym owners about this, this new program, um, we realized that this is not what they wanted. Um, we realized that they wanted it to be taken care of for them. They didn't necessarily have the time. They were, um, technologically intolerant. They didn't necessarily want to be behind the computers. So by <laughs> understanding this and getting all that feedback, we have since stopped offering this course and went full, just head over heels into completely full servicing. So um, we do much more for our clients than we did before the mistake. Um, but, but ultimately I think it's made us a better agency because, um, we look at it now as, okay, how, what can, else can we take off of our clients hands or what else can we help them optimize to get them a better result? And, uh, it, it, I remember one of my mentors sharing with me that the lazier you can make your clients while still being successful, the better. Oh, I love Make that. Make your clients lazy. Oh, yeah. lazy yeah. and successful. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, right. and that, successful. That, very key yeah. <laughs> caveat. Yes. Very that's key. Really cool. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Cause you need them to be successful so they can keep paying you. That's the point. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. And, and, and the steak is yeah. it, it, it's powerful, and you you then iterated it, you know, and okay, now we're gonna we're gonna do this, and uh, I mean, we, we're such fans of these best mistakes. You know, we just published a book called Mistakes: The Foundation of Your Small Business, and you know, we share. So uh, that mistake is definitely going to be in volume two. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. was uh, that was a big mistake, but again, it, it's just it was a big it was a lesson that needed to be learned, and yeah. we're better because of it. Yeah, that's your two. That's your tuition, as we always call it. <laughs> yes, That's exactly. It. It teaches us. So, uh, you know, one of the things I always like to do is I like to mix up techniques from one business to the net to others, uh, bringing over marketing that just you know works for one type of business to others because I think it creates new opportunities and brings a fresh pr- perspective to things. Uh, for and, and you talked a little bit about it, but for like non gym owners and not people that don't run kind of these personal services. Uh, is there another tip you could give them about, you know, social media that they could maybe apply to their marketing uh, and, and think about doing with, with their company? Um, a, t- a tip for that's, that's no dependent on a niche. Um, I'd have to say the best tip when, when it comes to social media marketing um, is to implement some goodwill, goodwill marketing. Um, this is something that we're doing with our gym owners, but it, it's and an, even our business, but also it can be done in any small business in any niche, um, to help with your, um, your offers. So let's say that three, well, let's say, let's use dentists as an example, um, three dentists in the same area, like they, they service the same area. They're relatively close. They're all offering on Facebook, a free teeth whitening. Right. The, sure. there, and to the okay. consumer, that's a teeth whitening, a teeth whitening is a teeth whitening. It's, is a teeth whitening. There's no real differentiation there. They might look at the page and look at the reviews and stuff like that. Um, but let's say one of the dentists is also putting out some ads that are very inexpensive, like a dollar a day, um, that has a video testimonial of a result from one of their clients. They just had an amazing experience. They've been going there for years. Uh, their children love it. Like it's just an amazing experience. They have that as an ad going out. They also have a valuable video going out. That's a tip that they can do at home to help them make sure that they, you know, whatever it is, they're never going to need dentures, (laughs) whatever, uh, the biggest, challenge or problem that their clients face, how can they solve that on their own and create a video around that? And then also sharing your story, right? And the business owner, every business owner has a story as to why they started, um, what really keeps them going, what their why is and sharing that, putting a face, um, for people to empathize with behind the business, um, really helps. So if one business has these three things, right, they have testimonials going out, they have valuable content that people can actually implement and get results with, and then also shares some, you know, stories to help the person empathize with them. I'm going to bet that a person scrolling on Facebook, if they see these different ads, but they've been indoctrinated with these one, with this one dentist who is offering all these val- this valuable content, this, these stories, these testimonials, they're more than likely to go with that business yeah. because there's a few right. things that happen. There's some reciprocity, right? They yep. implemented this tip. It has done, it's worked for them. Now they feel the need to give back a little bit. It's helped them ber- build a relationship, even though it's video content and you haven't actually met the person, you feel like, you know, them, they've shared a story. You can empathize with it, right? There's a few things that happen and that's very different than just offering, Hey, come get a teeth whitening. Yeah. No, Does that, that makes sense. Yeah, totally. it totally makes sense. You're yeah. you're you're adding value without asking for anything in return, and you're sharing your personal story, which make that connection with them. And combining those two things is great. Um, uh, that's a really valuable uh, set of, of tips there. Absolutely. Cause, and sorry, if I just add one more thing, Please. we, we look at, at Facebook and even YouTube and Instagram, and we see them as marketing channels now. Right. And when they first started, they were social connection channels, right? They're about connecting with your friends and family and sharing and building relationships and fostering relationships. And we've kind of gotten away from that where it's just like, buy my stuff, buy my stuff, buy my stuff. Here's an offer. Here's an offer. Here's an offer. So kind of going back to the roots of what social media really was created for was again, connection and building relationships. People are going to, it's going to be a breath of fresh air because we've moved so far away from that where everybody's just, you know, discount here, freebie here. And 
So yeah, as I mentioned, it's a breath of fresh air and it allows people to build a relationship before you even offer something to them. Yeah, that's huge. Yep. Yeah. Thank, no, thank that's what so people are looking it. for. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. Right. that's really great. Uh, Derek, I mean, it's some really great information here today that you shared with us. Uh, I'm really happy to learn about your business. It, it, you know, with your your depth of knowledge, it seems like uh, you're really on the, the right track and and it could expand well beyond to all kinds of other service businesses with your, your systems that you're putting in place. Um, so uh, thank you again for coming on the show. What's the best way for our listeners to connect with you and to learn more about untapped revenue? Yeah, absolutely. So if, if anybody wants to learn more, they can definitely go to www.untap-revenue.com or they can add me on Facebook at Derek for Vaughn. Happy to have a conversation there too. That's great. Yeah. We'll put all the links in the show notes, uh, for, uh, you can find at businessshow.co. And thanks again. I learned a lot. I always say that I learned the most on these shows, which is I, awesome. I learned the most today. Wait a minute. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> not, not, no, no, not this time, but, uh, but thanks again. And, uh, we really appreciate you coming on the show. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm happy to be here. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, man, that was uh, I, as always. I, like th- this, these interviews are great. We, we yeah, he was terrific. Ah, it's uh, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I love his the comments that Derek was making about uh, connecting with people and not just you know commoditizing these social platforms. I thought that was really powerful. You know, I've I've found. I mean, certainly that resonates with me. It's what we do, right? We wind up sharing far more than we ask people to to do for us and i and i think that that i mean let's face it that's kind of what i've built most of my career on is is that is just yeah. getting people let me help you and then if there's something that i have that you want to buy from me or there's a way to to you know monetize that relationship great but otherwise i just want to help but i think you need to be and he said this you need to be sincere about it you, you do you, yeah. yeah it can't be all uh you know just leaning in on well i'm going to give you this but no there will a quid pro quo. It's got to be authentic. I think if you find most people that are successful in whatever they do, it it is authentic and they do like giving back and adding value. Totally. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I also want to mention a couple things. Thank you for the reviews. We've been getting some great five-star reviews lately. It really helps the show. It's one of the best things you could do for us to give us 30 seconds of your day. Just go to businessshow.co slash reviews uh, or wherever you listen to the show, whatever podcast podcast app uh leave us a five-star review we would really appreciate it yeah uh, and, it, and also oh, go ahead well i was gonna say if your business is one that has reopened uh it, you know you mentioned at the beginning of the show you mentioned hairdressers well this week actually hairdressers here in new hampshire oh, were nice. given the green light and it, and with massive restrictions really only yeah, one person in the salon, you know, per hairdresser. So there's no waiting room. There's no, you know, I mean, it, it all it, in a way that at least to me seems logical and safe and all of that. But, but I'm, I'm, I'd be curious to, you know, talk with someone that's, that's, you know, been opened up and now what, what's it like? How, how's yeah. that go? Yeah. That would be great. Yeah. And, and before we go, I want to let you guys know, I'll give you a little teaser. Next week's show is all about virtual assistants and, you know, it's one of the secrets to my success and how you can use them to create your charmed life by using them. So if you would love to be able to do exponentially more than you do now, you don't want to miss next week's show. That'll do it. All right, awesome. folks. Thank you so much for listening. Thanks for the reviews. Thanks for everything. We'll see you. Uh, we'll see you next time. Keep living that charmed life. 